。好，接下来我们转换一下情绪哈。呃，今天有几位。贵宾在提问的时候都提到了 social， 所以我们刚才听到了 Facebook 的分享。那 Facebook 主要是从 EC 的角度来谈 social， 我们接下来这位讲者就要从 social 的角度来谈 social 啊，介绍他。嗯，要先从二零一一年冬天开始说起。那年冬天他在芝加哥念 MBA， 大家知道念 MBA 其实很辛苦的。芝加哥那地方冬天又冷，他女朋友跟他分手。啊，分手之后他就发狂似的。下载了差不多一百多个交友软体在他手机，其中六十个是付钱下载的啊。他每天晚上都邀一位女朋友约会，有时候搞错了还一个礼拜邀了两位。<笑>然后到二零一三年，他毕业之后回到了新加坡，他思考说：“哎，东南亚没有人在做交友网体，不如我来做一个交友软体吧。”于是他就做了拍拖这个交友软体。那二零。一三到现在，不过短短三年的时间啊，他在全球已经有两千五百万的用户哈。那最好的消息是，这两千五百万的用户中不包括他，因为他已经结婚了，而且当了爸爸。好，这是这个故事中最美好的部分。他今天也特别来到台湾，跟我们分享哈。各位，让我们掌声欢迎潘杰贤 Joseph。大家好 ，Thank you, Jamie, for for having me here today. Um, 我尽量用中文，但是初步的时候会用中文，其他就用英文了。我台湾，我老婆是台湾人。那呃， um, 我其实是在来台湾扩展生意的时候呢，在拍拖上认识他。那呃， um, 大概六个月前，你们看到那个在手册上面那个照片呢，可能是一年前拍，还没生小孩拍的时候。那现在拍了后呢，就会发胖。啊，那个生了后会一定会发胖。那我在我其实当当 App Works 邀我过来的时候呢，我没想到会有这么多人，所以我那个 PPT 呢也没有就是很早的去准备。我大概是两天前台风晚上，那个 W 饭店在摇的时候，我在床上弄那个 PPT， 所以这个 PPT 有点短一点，但是我会尽量大概说一下我在上三年，呃，从搜索学到的东西。看到吗？啊，这个是新加坡总理跟总理夫人，这个是大概是一一周前在呃新加坡的 F1 拍的。那我放这个上来是因为，呃，他在上面在脸书上有有破到我们那个人数，现在呢大概是两千万个用户，呃，年底应该会大概是两千五百。So I, I'm very proud of this. That's why I'm putting up here as the first slide. Um, so I'm going to continue speaking Chinese uh, English right now because. My Chinese is only as good as bringing me to Yanji Jia to eat roll fan, but then that nothing nothing more than that. So I started the company about three years ago, as as、uh, the MC mentioned. I was dumped by my ex girlfriend in Chicago. It was horrible. It wasn't during winter actually. It was the summer. I, I spent about three months trying to pick up girls in clubs. You know the usual way. It didn't work, and I retreated back into the world of、um, mobile dating, and.、Uh, I think it was the December till March of 2013. I was it was just amazing. I could date girls that were like 1.9 meters tall. They didn't care that I was Chinese, Asian, in Chicago, and I was only 1.7. It was just awesome. I was gonna go back to Singapore to work for McKinsey, and I realized that as a consultant, I would not have a life. And so actually, I created a park tour to help me meet girls. The original purpose of this was to create a platform where I could control the market. Get in like a thousand girls to two thousand girls. Put only ten guys on this platform, then I would be awesome, right? Like, like truly awesome. And that was the initial plan, but things didn't go as planned because when I launched the application in Singapore, it just exploded. There were like fifty thousand people signing up on the same day, and on the day, all the guys couldn't sign up, right? Because I had put a block. Anybody who registers as a male cannot use the application. Right, so then we we kept getting all these emails about, hey man, I just downloaded your application, but I can't sign it. What's up? And then I realized that I was onto something bigger than just a date tonight for myself. And that's how Park Tour came about. I never went back to McKinsey. I just focused. I spent the last three years working on this. I, I didn't think it would take so long. I thought maybe six months later I'll be done. I'll go back to work and earn a regular income. It's three years now, and we, we've grown quite a bit since. 
Oh, so I actually didn't introduce what the app, app does. So essentially, um, you meet people on this application. We show you, we show you what, um, what some profiles that we think you'll like. Uh, we have like 60 different variables that we use, including distance, height, swiping behavior, how fast you swipe, what time you use the application, and the list goes on. And if, if it's a mutual like, you guys match up. And you chat, and you go on a date like myself. We started in Singapore in 2013. We expanded into Southeast Asia in 2014. And at the end of 2014, we officially came into Taiwan. In 2015, we moved into Indonesia, which was the one market in Southeast Asia we didn't touch initially. We moved into Korea at the end of last year, and now we're planning on going to Japan. So this is, this is how it's been. Now, we, we started off a country in Singapore, uh, uh, Singapore, 5 million people. I very quickly realized that this market was not big enough. And, and so we moved into Vietnam and then Thailand, and then, yeah, so on. So I, I, instead of coming down, I went up. Now, in the last three years, it's, I, I wouldn't say it's been an easy journey. I would say it's been a very exciting journey that's been challenging at times. In 2013, when we first started the application, I didn't know anything about dating. I didn't know anything about mobile. I didn't know what a monthly active user meant. I didn't know what a daily active user meant. I only knew what it meant to go on a date. That was all I knew. Right? My background has been in finance, consulting, some bits of consulting. I did banking, I sold watches, I'm a jewelry person, I don't know anything about mobile. Hell, even before I, I came into the industry, I never played a single mobile game. So I had no idea what ARPU, ARPPU, retention, engagement, all these numbers meant. I didn't know anything, and that was reflected in my difficult... I had a very difficult time raising money. So I took money from family and friends first, and then after I tried to raise outside money, I remember the first conversation I had, what is your DAU to MAU ratio? I'm like, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? So the investor was actually teaching me what DAU and MAU meant. Right? And, then, and then after that, I went back to him, and I was like, oh, I know what my Dao Mao is right now. Then he came up with some other number, what's your 30-day retention, 60-day retention, 90-day retention, 120 days retention, and I didn't know all that stuff. So that was 2014. I was having a difficult time, but we learned, right? As, 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 as you, would, you would do if you, put it, you, you, had, you have all your family and friends' money in your company, you've already spent it all, you better learn. If not, you're never going to go to a Chinese New Year dinner happy. So that was what we did as a team. We, we scaled up to like 20-something people in 2014. We quickly learned how to do mobile. Right? And we found our groove. That was when I came to Taiwan, met my wife. My wife thought I was pretty good. And uh, we got married and... Wait, sorry, I'm, I'm talking about Pakto. Um, so in, in 2015, that was when we actually really started to grow. Right? We raised quite a few rounds of institutional funding and we started expanding our footprint in, in, in the region and we started making money. You know, making money is awesome. Don't let anybody tell you that you don't make money from social. You make money, you make all the money you can. Right? When you bring in that first dollar, it's awesome, but think about it. If you bring in the first million, that is an amazing feeling. Right? It's, it's a $1 million story. So that was 2015. Now in 2016, we've hit a few milestones. So I had my first son uh, six months ago, Alexander. He's very cute. I don't see him very much. He cries when I see when I when I when I come back home. He cries. Um, I don't know if he he doesn't like me or he just doesn't like guys. Um, but this year, in addition to having a baby, uh, we closed our last round, uh, led by Yahoo Japan, and uh, we we turned profitable. We broke the uh, eight-figure, eight-digit uh, P&L mark, uh, US dollars. And so it's been a big year for us now. What's even bigger is that we hit our one billion match mark uh, about a quarter ago. And it's been a huge moment for me because I started this company, so, so I started this company with the purpose of bringing people together, myself and all the singles around me. In the time that I've spoken, the last 10 minutes, 2,000 people in Southeast Asia would have gone on a date because of me and my team, of course, but because I started Pacto. That, that's actually the number that I care about most. Right? MAUs, DAUs, all these numbers don't actually mean a lot to me. What means a lot to me is actually bringing a guy and a girl into the same cafe, sit down, and potentially something else could happen in a, in a longer term. Why was there laughter there? Um, but yeah, so we continue to find ways to engage our users. Today, on Pak Tour, 45 minutes, uh, 45 minutes a day is spent per daily active user. Now, this is huge for us. 
on average, dating apps in the world, peop, uh, dating apps get about 20 minutes per day. We get about 45 minutes a day. So my team has been tasked, how do we get about two hours a day by next year? That's what we continue to think about. We innovate on different features that we think people will like. It goes as deep as localizing the application, localizing features, localizing every single thing for the country. I think a lot of the pre uh, presentations earlier have told you how Southeast Asia is a very fragmented market. You have 600 million people, but you have 12 countries, over 100 different languages, and over 1,000 different cultures. It's not possible for you to have one unified application that works in every single country. So if you open up an application in different countries, you're going to see different features, different colors, different UI, UX, different everything. That's what we have, we've had to do, and that's what we continue to do. Now, but what, what is next? So now, what, after one billion matches, after turning profitable, after having raised quite a bit of money, after having built up a team that's 120 people across eight physical offices in Asia, what's next, right? In addition to making money, of course, there are other things that's next. So I spend a lot of sleepless nights thinking about what's next. Honestly, do I have the answer of what's next? I don't. I have a very beautiful slide right after this that tells you that I know what's next. Actually, I don't, right? I spend sleepless nights thinking about how do I build Park To into something that's way bigger than just bringing one person with another person coming together for a date, because that was the original purpose. But dating is actually more than just dating. Dating is actually a piece in your social life. So what's next? Now, after many, many nights of thinking and, 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 and um, trying to figure out what's next, the team and I have we've come up with something that we think is going to be bigger than just dating. Now, dating is always going to be in our blood. Dating is always going to be something that we care a lot about. After all, everything about the last few years, to me, has been about dating. Now, but today, through some of the initiatives that we've taken over the last three months, Pacto is looking to expand, has already started expanding into different spaces that we think are aligned with what we hope to do. These include social networking, photo sharing, content sharing, live and entertainment. So instead of just being a social dating platform, the Pacto group today hopes to be the social entertainment platform for our region and essentially all of Asia x China. I have this aversion towards China because, I don't know, I, 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 it's, it's, not, it's not my cup of tea. You go inside, you're dead, right? Before you know it, you blink, oh shit, I'm gone, right? So I think I have a better shot outside of China. And so out, Asia outside of China uh, is where we're going to apply our trade in. And over the next two years, we aim to be the largest social entertainment network in our region. This network that we're trying to build is actually an ecosystem. Now, we see dating as a piece of this network, but this dating piece is actually what it, it, its core. It's a very strong monetization machine. Right? Dating, as you know, as you actually know, you may not know, makes the most money per monthly active user across any, any type of social platform. Dating is just a, a cash cow. Yes, cash cow, but, but we, 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 we just turned profitable. We're still growing. We're not that rich yet. But Dating needs a lot of traffic. So we try to build traffic around in, in this ecosystem. And, and how we've done it is actually through a corporate action that saw us acquire another, a, a very a, a high traffic platform. I'm going to talk a little bit about it in, 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 in later. So we drive traffic from a, a very high traffic platform into dating. And then we drive traffic from our dating platform into our offline services. So Pacto, in addition to having a mobile application, we also have Hongyang Fu, we have events, we have travel, we have corporate events, we have um, all sorts of things. Image consulting for people who we think can look better so they can go on a date. We have a lot of things offline that, that help support the company's uh, profit and loss. So I, I can't, I mean, so all I did for this slide was to put up some blockers on, on the assets that we acquired. But over the last two months, we've been quite active. And that's why I've been coming to Taiwan quite often, because some of the companies we're speaking to are in Taiwan. But we acquired three dating applications, and we acquired two social assets that drive a lot of traffic in, in the last two to three months. And this whole piece combined brings our, brings our registered user count to about 50 million registered users in, in the region. And in terms of profitability, 
again, drives the company's growth even further. Now, what this chart is going to tell you, essentially what I've tried to do, is I've admitted that I do not know everything about social. I know that I need to build an ecosystem to support my dream. And I don't have the ability to build it myself. Instead of trying to build it myself and um, figuring out, uh, figuring, trying to spend another three years, maybe meeting another girl somewhere else, um, instead of doing that, I've tapped into partners of which two companies are in Taiwan. I think Taiwan is a great place. I love Taiwan. My wife is stuck in Singapore right now. I come to Taiwan almost every week. Right? Um, I, I love Taiwan. I love the food. I, I love the people. Everybody's very nice. And the companies that I've spoken to that we've, we've started working with through acquisitions are amazing. So through these acquisitions, we build out a full ecosystem. And the goal for Pakto Group in the next year to two years is to bring this ecosystem outside of the countries that we have acquired them in into the rest of the, into the, rest of the regions in, in Southeast Asia. Combined, Pakta Group today stands at about 50,000 photos uploaded, 10,000 hours worth of content streamed on our platforms, and 70, 750,000 hours spent per day. Right, this is actually only the tip of social. I profess not to know everything about social, and I don't think you want to hear too much about the nitty gritty details about social. So I'll leave you guys to ask any questions you may have any. But thank you again for, for having me here, and I hope this has been relatively interesting. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, thank you. Joseph, in a very short time, he shared his definition of social. Social is not just dating, it's also the whole system of dating. He has so many different things that have been going on in the whole system of dating. And he has so many good things that have been going on in the whole system of dating. Dating 哈，进一步进展到其他形式的娱乐，包括的分享照片啦、分享 video 啦，呃，或是说直播啦等等的。那他也开发出一些周边的服务，比如说呃旅游啦，比如说这个形象的改造啦等等，让整个使用者的 social life 能够更为丰富哈。所以这是把 social 重新定义，也把自己的公司做很深刻的策略思考的一个极佳的案例哈。谢谢潘先生。